So I've made it to the um, Plaja Torico, which is in Teruel. I've got the bike already. So from here, I'm going to head towards um, the start of the route. Pick up some water from the fountain. I think it's drinkable. And head off. Okay, just before we get any further into this video, let's just uh, explain a little bit more about the Montanas Vasias. It was devised by a guy called Ernesto Pastor. He was a little bit concerned uh, as a cyclist uh, for the depopulation of an area of Spain which is quite remote and quite rugged. Um, it's a 422 mile route. It's mostly on double track forestry roads and it goes through some very, very small villages. It's quite uh, a remote area and resupply can be a little bit of a problem. Um, the maximum altitude that you get to is 6,630 feet uh, and it's a circular route but with various um, shortcuts depending on the amount of time that you've got available to you. As you go through the route you will realize that you're within quite a lot of uh, pine forest and outside of that there's farmed areas where you will find lots of abandoned farm buildings uh, crumbling and in ruin. It's very uh, scenic and the time when I did it early March was possibly a little bit too early for the route because it was extremely cold in some of the higher elevations. Anyway, let's dive straight into it. So a couple of miles in, uh, I've stripped off a little bit, it's just a bit too hot. Anyway, interesting landscapes around here. Quite a few ups and downs so far, but uh, look at these badlands. And we're heading, heading towards that forest away in the distance. I've just ridden through this sort of forest area, absolutely massive area of forestry. Anyway, there's this kind of like, uh, as you can see, pylons going through and it's left a nice <coughs> clear space where I can pitch my tent and for the first time it's like grassy mossy base so hopefully be a bit more comfortable previously it's been quite stony anyway the sun's heading down so I'm gonna get the stove on and get something to eat see you tomorrow Oh, good morning all. Just poking my nose out of the tent here. Just uh, having breakfast. It's been a really cold night. Struggling with the frost at the moment. I guess I knew it was going to be cold. In my realisation, seeing the hills around covered in snow, I guess I knew it would be frosty and cold. It was the coldest night I've ever spent in a tent last night. I've worn just about every item of clothing I've got. Anyway, it's the uh, start of a nice bright day by the look of it. Hopefully when the sun comes up, it'll um, start drying the tent. There's loads of condensation everywhere. Right, breakfast to be had, some porridge and a uh, bit of tomato and bread. See you a bit further on the road. Nice day, nice start to the day anyway. Finally got the tent dried out. Making my way to 
او براثين That was a fantastic descent. I feel like I've descended about a thousand feet there. <laughs> Just went on and on and on. Nice bit of blacktop. Arrival in Al Barasin. Cycled up from the bottom there. Uh, booked a place in a uh, um, <clears throat> like a youth hostel. So I'm just going to head there and get the batteries charged up, take the rest of the day off, take it easy for a bit. I noticed that the uh, the height gain onwards is quite quite a significant 5,000 odd feet so uh, I think I'm just going to uh, rest up here for a day for the rest of the day and then do the climbing tomorrow see you later I'm just uh, leaving Al Barathin and I'm on this steep um, hiker bike section just up onto the top here. It's a bit of a push but it's doable. Sun's shining, sky's blue. So we'll get up the uh, top here and uh, heading towards Broncales. So we've just uh, come over the top from Alberathin and now we're descending quite uh, quite sharply, quite a lot of height loss now, right back down into the valley. But it's a lovely descent, nice smooth road to come down. Fantastic. Amongst all these pine trees, beautiful forest around here on the Camino El Cid, I believe. So it's mid-morning, I'm just stopping for a break and um, just back there is the first flowing water I've seen on the entire trip, apart from the river at Al Barathin and maybe at Teruel. Um, but it's a little stream and it's flowing halfway between Albaracin and Broncales, so that's worth noting. Other than that, I've put a, a litre and a half of water into my bottles at Albaracin and that should easily get me across to, uh, to, to the next village, Broncales. So, one of the things to consider is getting water. Um, it's a pretty dry area, <laughs> even this time of year. I think I've just reached the top here. Thankfully a bit of downhill to come. 
on the road to Broncalis. Obviously quite a lot of uh, way marked routes around here for walking. I think I'm on the uh, Ruta Abrigos de los Pastores. Right, downhill. Here we go. Now I'm just approaching uh, a town called Broncales. Nice little bit of track here. Very easy to cycle along. There's Broncales up ahead. I think, uh, well you can see there's been quite a bit of snow here recently. Rather disconcerting me when I arrived. I was watching the TV in the evening, the day before setting up, and uh, the meteor, the weather people, were on and they showed a picture of Broncales with absolutely loads of snow on it. And it was a bit alarming really because I knew that Broncales was on the route. Anyway, the snow's kind of melting. It is making the track a bit muddy in parts. But there's Broncales. Rather a worrying amount of snow up here. <laughs> I hope this road doesn't get any worse or completely blocks up. Thankfully there's been some vehicles through here and created a bit of a trackway. Maybe not the best idea to do this in early March. <laughs> On the way to Oro, Orohelo, Oroelo. See if we get there. <laughs> Watch this space. It is lovely though, isn't it? Look at that forest. All you can hear is bird song. When you see a view like that, you definitely feel like you're uh, coming out of the mountains. One heck of a descent just there. You climb a little bit from Broncales on a tarmac road through that snow, but then uh, a long descent back down to the uh, back down to the plain. By the look of it, I guess Orhuela uh, is around the corner here. Anyway, we'll go and see. Certainly losing quite a lot of height. <laughs> it's a lovely trail. These descents are fantastic. So this is the uh, Iglesia Barocca San Milan and it's quite some structure and it dominates the skyline as you approach this place Oruela Trinidad That's where I've just come from over there, around the 
back of these hills. Right, I'm gonna have a look at the route guide and see where we go from here. It's about quarter past three, so a bit more time to ride, I think. Well, this is a bit more than a bargain for. Um, I'm about 14 kilometers from Griegos, which is in that direction. And uh, there's a track down here to a refuge which I'm going to go to. The snow is really deep. Apparently there is a fireplace there, but you've got to pick up wood from the ground. But there's so much snow about, I'm beginning to wonder if there's going to be any wood to pick up. So I guess it's going to be a case of have a look and see. Otherwise it's going to be a bit cold up here. But I don't really fancy going any higher up because it's really, really snowy. At least until tomorrow morning. Let's go and see what this refuge has got in store for us. Well, it's cold outside. I managed to gather some wood from the um, surrounding forest. Just down here. And I've got a fire lit eventually. It took a bit of doing. But I got it going. It's um, it's making me feel a little bit more um, <laughs> a bit more comfortable, but uh, I don't think it's going to add very much to the heat in here. There's the gear over there. Right, so I'm in Refuge La, La Portera, and I've got the fire going. So that's the end of this day, and. Um, Hopefully, see you tomorrow. Well, good morning. It's uh, Friday the 15th of March. Uh, I'm at the uh, Refugio Forestal, uh, just outside Orhuela del Tremadal, and uh, woken up to beautiful sunshine. Fantastic. The trees are full of birds. Had a fantastic night here. Really good, uh, good sort of... Um, accommodation <laughs> essentially got a fire lit as you could see uh, today's task is to um, get over to Griegos um, that's the kind of situation I'm going to somehow get through this this snow it is quite thin in places but I noticed the track was quite uh, packed in with snow but anyway uh, that's the direction I'm going to be going in. We'll see how we get on. Hopefully it's not too much pushing and pulling. There's the uh, little observatory tower. You've got a, a bit of a view through the trees there down into the valley and beyond. Right, time to get packed up. See you on the trail. Back on, uh, back on the road here towards Gregos. Still plenty of snow about, but fortunately not on the road. You see why they call this the uh, Lapland of Spain. <laughs> Pine trees and snow. Really nice descent, come down quite a bit of altitude but there's still quite a bit of snow about, particularly on the north facing slopes. Still heading towards this little village, Griegos. Down here apparently, looks like there's no snow to block the track. 
was it did turn out I managed to get to um, Griegos and then continued on to Guadalajara. But as I got towards the Nascimento del Tajo, things got definitely worse. Making slow but steady progress. Trying to get down to the uh, Nascimento del Tajo, which is the source of the river Tajo. Hopefully I can pick up a, a road there uh, that's uh, been ploughed. Anyway, keep going. Making slow progress as you can imagine. All good fun. <laughs> it's been a bit of an epic ride getting here from, uh, I think it was called Guadalavia, down a track. This is the track here. Uh, anyway, I've made it to this uh, birthplace of the Rio Tajo, Tajo. Whew. Plenty of water there. Snow melt, thankfully. Quite an impressive sculpture. A snowflake on top of his head. And you've got the bulls. Classic stuff. Anyway, from here I'm gonna have a look at the uh, the route forward and decide how to proceed because uh, getting along these trackways is really difficult. <clears throat> Far too much snow at the moment, unfortunately, and the bits that I can ride are absolutely soaking wet and muddy and uh, just take all of your energy. I mean, that's a good bit there. <laughs> Shouldn't complain. I'm in Spain and the sun's shining. <laughs> so the route to Cheka, which is about 30 kilometers away, um, is down this road here, but unfortunately, unlike the bit that I've just done, where you can ride in the tracks a little bit, here the persons or vehicles have turned around, probably because of those fallen trees, but it does mean I'm not going to be able to get through there. It's just too too tricky, so I'm going to find an alternative way. I think there's a, a shortcut to a place called Tragaseat, so I'll see if I can get across there. Right, let's uh, let's do that. Well, this is quite some descent towards Tragaseat, but thankfully, uh, at least. We're getting out of the snow, which is a bit a uh, bit better, easier for cycling. Nice viewpoint. Arrival in Tragasit. It's a lot warmer down here, that's for sure. Thankfully, see what Tragasit's got to offer. So when I arrived in. Uh, Tragaceti. The intention was to get to the Refugio della Alcon Alconera, but that involved climbing back up into the hills, the Sierra de Cuenta, and the snow conditions became absolutely impossible. You can tell from my camera work here that I wasn't on the ball at all. It was really tough. It was a case of lifting the bike and sliding the bike along. Uh, and as night fell, I was really worried that I wasn't going to get to the refugio. But I did make it and I got a fire going. All was well. So one of the little casualties of the uh, wet slushy snow push of the previous evening was my drivetrain. It's always important to carry some maintenance uh, tools and equipment. So here I am just uh, making sure I've got some uh, 
well it's not actually oil it's chain wax uh, onto the chain and into the uh, derailleur to make it uh, sing a little bit better well good morning it's the start of another day I'm back on the trail I've just descended a little bit from the uh, refugio I uh, got a bit of a shock last night because somebody arrives at about quarter past three in the morning we're miles from anywhere but there is a, <coughs> a paved road here and they came up in a, a van anyway I, uh, I was about to get up and open the door but they disappeared so I think they well they did they camped in their van for the night so I was left kind of undisturbed but uh, that was a bit of a shock to the system so we're back on this little road heading down towards Beermud there's still quite a bit of snow about so I'll just see how things progress and then take it from there I'm, I'm hopeful that the further on I go the less snow there might be but uh, we shall see so it's a case of walk a little bit ride where I can and uh, just go from there Approaching a little village called Biamud. Hopefully, there's something open for a coffee. We shall see. Heading out of Biamud. Unfortunately, the bar was closed. Very quiet. And we'll see how this trail shapes up. What? Coffee. Coffee and cake on the roadside. <laughs> mm. Mm, oh, I'm not sure whether to paddle across that or ride across it. What do you think? <coughs> mm. <laughs> right. I'm going to try riding across it, I think. It doesn't look like there's any slime in there. Let's see how I get on. Well, the answer is I rode across it. Feet are still dry. That's good. <laughs> Into another little village. Just had a fantastic uh, downhill bit there from my lunch point hardly gone uphill at all just descending so much anyway given that there wasn't a, a place to have a coffee or anything back in the other village I'll see if there's anything here yeah Very, very, very picturesque. Lots of four wheel drives, I think they need them on, on the roads around here. Wow, look at this blossom on the tree here.
Well, good morning all. It's uh, Sunday the 17th of March. Just setting off for the day. Um, not sure how far I'll get today. It's um, quite hot already. 10 o'clock in the morning. Bit of a late start, but it is Sunday after all. Lovely place to camp. And for the first time there's no frost. And I actually uh, slept quite well. Very little condensation on the tent. That's that's basically where I camped just around here. Anyway, we'll go and hit the road. We're heading in that direction. A little bit of a hill climb to start with. And uh, hopefully find some places uh, open to get coffee and eat. Right, let's get up the road. So I've just got to the top of another pass here. And I just thought I'd pause a bit to... Look at the view, and it is quite a nice view. You can see quite a long way in the distance. I don't know if the GoPro is picking it up. Obviously the road down there running across that hillside. Pine trees on the, on the slopes over there. Lovely valley down there. One or two little buildings. Little mooch around the villa. There's a town hall, Paja Mayor, Ayutamiento. I think our route takes us down here. feel really remote out here. Anyway, as long as the wheels are turning we're making progress I guess. See what's over the next hill. Well five minutes later I've just come up this track and there's uh, got, got onto a top. There's a bit more stone in the uh, in the pavement. And it looks like there's a bit of downhill into another valley. A bit of signposting here. Ruta BTT Los Serranos. So I'm going Salva Canete, Canete. Just come from Zafrila. So that's the way we're heading. A bit better, hopefully. Ah, back on tarmac and down this sort of gorge. Impressive scenery. Heading down to Aloblas. Nice descent on a lovely road. Well, it's about uh, five o'clock in the afternoon and I'm on this really nicely uh, surfaced road like a forestry road uh, heading to El Cuervo which is down here somewhere um, not exactly sure where but it does look downhill which is promising So the gravel road has turned into uh, asphalt road, which looks uh, okay. Sometimes you've got to watch out for really big potholes that just spring up on you. 
<laughs> but there's El Cuervo sitting in the bottom of that gorge. Let's turn the birdie and we get a quad that's connected to the um, connected to the system. Oh, good morning, we're just uh, starting the day at Castelli Fab, I think that's what it's called. Fantastic place right on this kind of uh, outcrop of rock. Just going to have a little walk up here. If today goes to plan I'll be able to get some uh, supplies because I'm kind of running out of stuff and then uh, see what uh, see what Javalambre has in store for us. So, see how that day works out. Let's have a look up here first. So we come up onto this little viewpoint. Actually, uh, that's where I camped just down there, next to that big metal structure in the area recreativa. Okay. Quite high up here. See why they built it on this. There's a the road down there. Presumably that's the way forward. I guess that must be, uh, I don't know, maybe Javel Ambre's over there. Nice. What a fantastic structure. Little alleyways and passageways everywhere. And some uh, either swallows or swifts. Not sure which, there they go. I wonder if they've arrived in the UK yet. So that's the, uh, the route that I came down. Arriving in Torre Baja. Hopefully get some breakfast maybe, see if something's open. Get a few supplies for the day. It's supposed to be a, a supermarket and various other bits and bobs. We'll have a look. Ah, bigger than any place I've been in up to now anyway. I've just got to this uh, pole and there's sort of tracks going everywhere but according to uh, the route I go down here and then swing round into that sort of basin and presumably up that track over there What time is it now? It is time, I've been on with this since uh, it's five o'clock so I'll have plenty of time. I set off at 10 really at the bottom. Anyway, let's see how we go. So I've just passed the 6,000 6, feet elevation here in quite a, a wild landscape. Just uh, 
pedaling where I can, where the gradient isn't too steep. Observatories are way over there. Maybe we don't visit the observatory. <laughs> Getting there. Huh. Let's have a lambre. Made it. <laughs> Top of Jabal Ambre. It's half past six in the evening. Sun's getting a bit low, certainly chilly. And I'm at 2,019 meters. I don't think I've ever taken my bike higher than that. But there it is. Just got to find a way down now. It's taken me all day to get up here, <laughs> as you can imagine. Mainly pushing, quite a bit of pushing. But uh, yeah, sense of achievement. Anyway, from here hopefully there's a lot of downhill and not very much snow to contend with. A few little banks of snow further around but easy to negotiate around. Yeah, so we're amongst all the uh, ski paraphernalia. Right, let's see if this bike will take us downhill a bit. Arriving in the uh, Pueblo Valverde. Gonna have a look for the fountain, see if I can get some water, and then take it from there. Wonder if it's through here. Ah, this looks promising. So I'm leaving. Uh, Pueblo de Valverde, back on the Camino del Cid. So far, so nice. Right, heading towards those mountains in the distance. It's very hazy today, but it feels like a completely different part of the of the route from uh, from the motorway intersection back there I've hardly turned a pedal here's a little barn or farm structure of some sort very picturesque Still on the trail, heading towards, I think the next uh, village is Rubiales, which is just around the corner, I believe. A bit drier out here. One of the kind of challenges in some parts of this route is actually getting, getting water supplies. There is a, a refugio just further up here, so I'm hoping that there might be some water around that. Anyway, we'll update you further up the road. Well, I made it to the refugio Hontana. Uh, looks a nice place, I haven't been inside it yet. The main issue for me, as I said before, was getting hold of water. Thankfully, I've got all three bottles now filled up. Um, if you're ever here, you have to go down into the valley and there's like a picnic area. Alarmingly, the first little outlet is completely dry and I thought, oh dear, that's it. But then if you look further down the hill, there's a second one. 
and you press the tap and the thinnest trickle of water took me ages to fill each bottle. Right, so there's a, a fireplace which looks like it's usable. Some handy bits of wood down there. Uh, there's no sort of sleeping platform though. So it is a case of just keeping on the floor. Second little room here. Right. Well, I'm going to make a brew and then take it from there. Morning all, another day in the saddle, just uh, about to leave the Refugio Hontana and I'm heading to the next village along the, the way, I'll put a, a note in the corner for you and then a climb up to I think the highest point if I've got the energy to do it <laughs> so we're all, all ready to go Well, here we are, just arriving at Linares de Mora. Oh, well, the sign tells you where we are. We're at uh, the ski station. So this is the top of uh, Penaraya. Or Peña Arroya, not quite sure how it's pronounced. We'll have a look. Highest point on the Montanas Vacias route. Just acres and acres, endless forest. Getting into warmer territory again now as I uh, descend fairly quickly and fairly steep now down here down into the valley bottom Morning all, start of another day just leaving Macala de la Selva going down this lovely rocky gorge Nice smooth road ahead. Let's see how the day unfolds. So as I approach the top of this final climb of the Montanas Vacias adventure, thanks ever so much for watching this far, it means a lot. Well that's me pretty much at the top of the final climb. From what I understand it's downhill all the way back to Teruel. I'm at 4875 feet at the moment. So I've made it into Teruel, it's tea time, seven-ish, uh, not seven-ish, about five-ish. 
I'm just looking for the uh, the Plaza Torico. So I made it back to the Plaza Torico where I started the uh, bikepacking route a few days before. Really enjoyed the route overall. The Montanas Fasius is a really nice place to take your bike. The only thing I would probably recommend is that you take it a bit later in the year when there's a bit less snow about. The following day I visited Suraya Bikepacking and Yoga Studio where they have a great supply of uh, bikes and components and accessories including gas canisters. A couple of great people really interested in what I was doing. Also to note uh, one or two service places along the route such as the Bar Escalon. Rafa here tells me he's got uh, spare inner tubes and various other supplies if your bike needs a little bit of attention. Beyond that I followed the Camino del Cid back to Valencia and uh, had a little bit of time sightseeing there before my flight home. If you found the video helpful please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. I'm very nearly at 2,000 subscribers so please help me along with that. If you've got any comments please leave them in the space below. Beyond that thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.